Hi. Last time we talked about pragmatics. And we've said that pragmatics is the study of the intended meaning of the speaker. So the field of pragmatics covers the level of an utterance and its interpretation among the speaker and the listener, the writer and the reader. Today we are going to discuss a field that deals with written rather than spoken. Within pragmatics we mainly deal with spoken language and sometimes written but within the discourse analysis we mainly deal with what is in text because discourse means text analysis is the investigation of text well so the definition of discourse analysis according to you is the study of language beyond the sentence what comes over the sentence level it is investigated within discourse analysis whether in text and conversation but the conversation has has to be transcribed and moved from spoken to be written in text and then analyzed because if you are doing an analysis to a conversation that is currently going on it is not within the field of discourse analysis we are doing discourse analysis when conversation spoken is transcribed in text rather than spoken i hope this is clear so in interpreting discourse there are two main areas worth of investigation the first one is called cohesion and the second one is called coherence Cohesion refers to the ties and connections that text or exist within text. What does that mean? It means that there are some cohesive devices that are used in, in, in the text, such as words, phrases, connect the text itself. An example of these cohesive devices would include the pronouns. If a noun is already introduced in a first sentence, there should be a pronoun referring to that proper noun mentioned earlier. If you remember what we have discussed within pragmatics, the antecedent and anaphoric expressions. The antecedent is the proper noun and the anaphoric expression is the pro pronoun that refers to the already introduced proper noun. So cohesive devices and cohesive ties are the words that connect the, the sentences and make it clear from any ambiguity. Well, so another important concept in interpreting discourse is the concept of coherence beside cohesion. Coherence refers to the connections that create a meaningful interpretation of text. What does that mean? It means it is making sense of what we hear and read. Well, so conversation analysis is the analysis that is related to conversations. Conversations, according to Yule, can be described as an activity in which two or more people taking turns at speaking. Typically, one person speaks at a time and there tends to be an avoidance of silence between speaking terms. So the turn and conversation is the unit of talk by one speaker, ended by the beginning of a next speaker's unit of talk. Marked by a completion point, in conversation, the end of a turn, marked by a pause at the end of a please, 
or a sentence. Turn taking, the way in which each speaker takes a turn in conversation with filled pause, a break in the flow of speech using sounds such as M or R. So conversation analysis is the analysis of conversation that takes part into different levels of written, spoken texts. There, there is a need to study the turns in a conversation, the completion point, and the turn taking. Cooperative principle theory is a theory that was initiated by Paul Greis. It talks about how people should converse and have conversations with some maxims that they have to follow. So according to him, there is an underlying assumption of conversation that you will make your conversational contribution such as required at the stage at which it occurs by the accepted purpose or direction of talk, talk exchange in which you are engaged. يعني هذا شنو؟ يعني اكو اربع ماكسيمز كل شخص يجب ان يلتزم بيها من خلال التحاور مع الاشخاص. تكون محاورته relevant لها علاقه بال, 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 بالمتلقي clear uh, بدون اي غموض. Uh, you provide information as required without any vagueness. So these are the four maxims of the cooperative principle theory. The first one is called quantity maxim, the assumption in conversation that you will make your contribution as informative as it is required, but not more or less. يعني من تحاور لازم تكون your your provided information informative. When someone asks you where can I find the hospital? Your answer should adhere to the required question, required piece of information. You should just say, please, it's over there. You can find the hospital, it's over there. But when you say, well, let me talk to you about the hospital and when it was established or built, it was built, this is not informative. So you are not adhering to the quantity of maxims. Second one is the quality maxims. Assumption conversation that you will not say that which you believe to be false or for which you lack adequate evidence. Someone asks you, is, is there a curfew? You would say, well, I think they have said it's going to be a curfew sometime within this week, but here you are not adhering to the quality maxim of the cooperative principle. Third one is the relation maxim. It is believed that in conversation, you should be relevant. Someone asks you about something, you should answer your question concerning that something that is being asked by the, the interlocutor. And the fourth one is the manner maxim. The assumption in, in conversation that you will be clear, brief, and orderly. When someone asks you, can you pass me the soul, please? Okay. You would just answer by, I cannot, well, I will, do, it is not close to me, but don't talk about salt as being, for example, not good for health, because you are not adhering to the manner maxim of a uh, Grayson cooperative principle. Okay, so what is a hedge? A hedge is a word or phrase used to indicate that you are not really sure that what you are saying is sufficiently correct or complete. When you violate the maxims of cooperative principle, you have to use hedges in order to tell the interlocutor that your, what you are saying is not relevant, you are not clear of what you are saying. For example, if one asks you about, um, do you know where the nearest restaurant is? You would answer, well, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But I think. But I think. Another one asks you a question. Do you believe 
that the curfew or the holiday will be over soon about the coronavirus. And you say, uh, just let me be frank with you. هذه let me be frank with you. احنا نسميه hedges. انه انت تنطي فد عباره حتى تبين للمتلقي انت مو متاكد ما تعرف آه, مو واثق من الكلام اللي تحكي. This is hedges. Well, so what is implicature in a conversation? In conversations, sometimes we implicate something. Implicature is an additional meaning conveyed by a speaker adhering to the cooperative principle. يعني, someone asks you a question, are you coming to the party tonight? And you answer, I've got an exam tomorrow. You are adhering to the cooperative principle. You are giving some an answer which is clear, but you are implicating that you cannot come to the party tonight because you need to study for exams tomorrow. هذا إحنا نسميه implicator تضمين بالكلام. So you implicate something in order to give a full and clear answer to the interlocutor. Sorry. Somebody called me, Mr. Majid. Well, one last point of this chapter is the two terms, schemas and scripts. So schema is a conventional knowledge structure and memory for specific fillings, such as a supermarket name, food displayed in shelves, arranged in aisles, and so on. Schema is a sort of the التي تشابه الذاكرة عن أسماء شيء مرتب إلى آخره. Script هو conventional knowledge structure and memory for the series of actions of all the events such as going to the dentist. لكن script هو عبارة عن ذاكرة محفوظة لأحداث. تمام؟ One more thing. I will include the study structure or the studies question of this chapter and I will leave you to answer these questions. After that, I will post the answer to you in the comment section of Google Classroom. Thank you. Please, please work on the study questions, these study questions and try to answer them in the comment section in Google Classroom. I will post the questions answers after you finish your assignment. Thank you.